Welcome to Goober Town Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today, I'm going to show you how you can plan paint schemes using PowerPoint of all things. Let's get to it. So the basics here are that I take a picture of a model and put it into PowerPoint. Then I start tracing, primarily just using the freeform shape tool and making shapes that match the model. So why am I using PowerPoint? There must be better programs for this, right? Well, the main reason is that I have access to PowerPoint, I'm relatively proficient with it, and it gets the job done. I'm sure there are drawing tools out there that are better for exactly this type of work, but PowerPoint is a program that I know, and it actually works surprisingly well. I expect that some of you folks will know some great ways of drawing up a quick space marine, but probably a lot of people are in the same boat as me, knowing Microsoft Office better than any other software suite. I don't have any experience at all as a 2D artist, but anyone can trace, and that's all I'm doing here. As you can see, this Primaris Lieutenant is really starting to take shape. I'll go through what I'm doing in a little more detail in a moment, but for now I'm just going to add a few quick details and we can start coloring stuff in. In addition to the freeform shapes, I'm also putting in a few curves as contour lines. These are good for creases, wrinkles, and hard angles that you want to pick out. Adding these contour lines involves a little more judgment than just blocking in the shapes, but ultimately it's still just tracing and pretty straightforward. You can be as sloppy or as neat and detailed as you want. I've found that either way, you end up with a pretty cool, stylized version of the model that you started with. Since I'm going to be showing these images to you fine folks, after throwing in some initial colors, I went back and neatened up the borders for the various shapes. Now, of course, we can fill these shapes with any color we want from Microsoft's color palette. But to make this more helpful to me, I'm going to be using colors from my color palette. I happen to have a bunch of Army Painter paints, and Army Painter made this nice color swatch image. So what I'm going to do is pick my colors directly from those little hexagons. In the Fill Colors menu, I can pick the eyedropper tool and just click on the color that I want to use as a fill. And of course, you can do this for any brand, just use the color swatches that they post online. I find it helpful to group objects so that you can color all the armor or all the trim at the same time. Since we're working in PowerPoint, we can copy this slide as many times as we want and keep trying different colors. Let's draw up a quick Stormcast Sequitur, then we can talk about another way to shade, highlight, and even put non-metallic metal effects into these simple PowerPoint drawings. I absolutely love this model, but I haven't gotten the chance to paint it yet. I got it at the GW booth at Gen Con last year, and I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with her. I'm not a big fan of the Stormcast helmets, but some of these bareheaded models are absolutely stunning. Okay, so here we are with a nice sketch, and the basic colors blocked in. Getting the basic colors blocked in helps a lot, but what about shading and highlighting? Well, watch this. PowerPoint has a gradient fill option, so the fills can actually be a gradient between two or more colors. Let's work on the cloth here. The gradient sliders give us a lot of control to plan how much highlighting we really want. Here I've set a dark tone, a medium tone, and a light tone, and I can decide which dominates and where they set in. Let's go with this look for now, where the light color is at the bottom of the cloth, where maybe the cloth is flared out and is catching the light better. These contour lines that I've added for creases in the cloth can be colored to represent highlights. Again, if we think back to 3D World, this is all representing doing a little bit of blending and layering on the model. It's way faster to experiment with these looks in PowerPoint than it is to try to create the effects on the model with a brush. Now let's talk about the gold armor. If we look at the color palette, Army Painter used a non-metallic metal technique to make the swatches look shiny. If I go and try to grab the color gold with the eyedropper tool, I'll end up with a single brown or yellow color which doesn't look especially metallic. We can actually mimic that non-metallic metal effect from the color swatch in our PowerPoint image as well, using that gradient feature. For gold, I can just go between dark brown and a very pale yellow a few times to simulate the metal glinting at us. 
I can use as many sliders in the transition menu as I need to get the effect that I want. Depending on how much time I want to spend, I can do this for all of the armor panels at once, or I could even customize each one. As a note, if you're applying a gradient to all these shapes at once in PowerPoint, you'll get two different effects depending on whether the objects are currently grouped. Here we are with all the armor plates selected at once, but not grouped. And here we are with all of them grouped into a single object. Either of these methods could be useful depending on what look you're trying to go for. All right, that was really fun. Let's do some more. Here's a Malifaux model. I found that the tracing doesn't even need to be that good to end up with a nice looking picture at the end. If you want, you can spend lots of time tweaking the vertices and the freeform shapes to get things looking great, but you don't have to if you don't want to. This is your picture. You can spend as much or as little time on it as you want. The pictures that I'm showing in this video took me about 40 minutes each to trace and color. A strategy that I've found to be helpful is to draw the shapes that are farthest back first. So draw skin before clothes, clothes before armor, weapon grips before fingers. PowerPoint layers each new shape above the previous, and although you can go and reorder these, it's just easier to draw them in an order that makes sense for the model. So on the first shapes, which will be layered towards the back, you can be rougher with where they border other shapes. Then. When you draw the top layer shape, you can focus on making the border between the two look really nice. So Victoria here from Malifaux is a very small model, and tracing her up on the big screen is really helping me to notice details and think about how many colors I'll need to paint her up. Some of these details are pretty hard to see with the naked eye, especially on bare plastic. But the camera did a good job of capturing all the details, and tracing the model is really getting me to connect with all the various shapes. Alright, this turned out pretty well. Let's move on to a Necromunda Ganger. For this video, I chose models that I want to paint sometime in the next few months. Or, more realistically, maybe sometime in the next year. The purpose of these drawings is to help me pick and visualize good color schemes. So I tried to pick sculpts and angles which would look good in 2D. The sculpt needed to have an angle that captures the spirit of the model, where all the major color blocks and features are visible, in a way that really represents the model and the squad that I eventually want to paint. For planning a gang, a squad, or even an army, the model that I'm sketching up needs to really represent the force as a whole. This Necromunda Ganger is a good example. The pose is a bit silly, but his pose also makes him very easy to convert to 2D. His arms and guns are out of the way and not obstructing his chest. This view is missing the fact that the back of his trench coat has a bunch of armor plating, but that color is at least partially represented in this image on the shoulders and the elbows. Now, instead of picking colors from PowerPoint presets or color swatches from your go-to paint line, you can also match colors to pictures of models. I'm thinking about using the dark green ink that I used on this Dark Eldar Venom. It's really easy to use that dropper tool to test run this idea and see if it has potential to look cool. And here's another idea for a way that you can pick colors. Use that dropper tool in conjunction with an online color wheel. The color wheel is a crazy, magical thing that's half hard science, half human psychology, and 100% awesome. When you have a color or two that you like, you can use the color wheel to suggest some other possibilities for filling in the rest of the model in a way that's more likely to be pleasing on some deep, primal level. This is the color wheel on adobe.com. You can use tools like this to explore various color harmonies and maybe stumble on a color scheme that you hadn't considered. Now, when I'm using this online color wheel, I do need to copy snips of the color wheel into PowerPoint for the color fill dropper to work properly. PowerPoint does have an internal color wheel, but I really like the way the wheel on Adobe's website will recommend color harmonies to you. If anyone knows how to get an interactive color wheel like this into PowerPoint, let us know. Hopefully you're enjoying this janky little computer art tutorial. I sure am. 
I've been having a wonderful time experimenting with different types of projects and videos for this channel, and the response from viewers has been really flattering and really motivating. Please check to make sure that you're subscribed, because there's a lot of great stuff on the way. I've got a lot of painting tutorials in the hopper, but I also have some terrain projects that I'm working on, some hobby science to talk about, and a few extremely ambitious painting challenges. If you're liking what I'm doing here, the best way that you can help the channel is to tell people about it. That would really mean a lot to me. The topic of this video is actually a fun opportunity to spread the word. I encourage everyone to try out this drawing technique and to post some of the pictures online. Take some pictures of your favorite models and trace them up in PowerPoint or some other program that you're comfortable with. These drawings take less time than it takes to paint a mini and you get to explore the sculpt in a whole new way. You get a chance to discover some awesome paint schemes and you also end up with a great little character portrait that you can be proud of. So yeah, I challenge you all to draw up a model or two and post them to your favorite gaming group, hobby group, or art group. Spread the word! I'd absolutely love to see what you all are coming up with, so go ahead and tag them with Goobertown Challenge and post a link back here in the comments as well so that we can all take a look. You heard right, I'm starting an internet challenge, the Goobertown Challenge. There are a lot of frightening internet challenges out there, but Goobertown Challenge is 100% wholesome and you'll be glad that you participated. Go ahead and drop some models, post them, tag them. I can't wait to see what you're working on, and I'm sure the community will have some feedback and suggestions on different paint schemes that you might be thinking about. I think that these little drawings look great, especially for how easy they are to make. You don't have to be good at painting or photography or even computers to draw these. Just do a bit of tracing, a bit of coloring, and make an awesome looking image that can inspire your painting. These have a fun, stylized look to them, and I think it would be cool if we got these little sketches to trend or even be a meme in a few corners of the internet. Alrighty, open up PowerPoint and I'll give you a few tips to get you started. And then, we'll get to the highlight reel of some of my favorite creations. First, Resizing all these shapes and getting them to stay in the right place is annoying, so make sure to start with the image properly sized on the screen the way you want it. I like it taking up most of the height of the slide. Next, this freeform shape tool is quite useful. Just click to add vertices to the shape and make your way back to the first point to finish it up. When you're done, you can right click and select edit points to neaten things up. When your cursor looks like this, you can drag vertices around. When your cursor looks like this, you can right-click again to add vertices or delete them. I personally don't like the default theme colors in Microsoft Office. If you also don't like this blue, you can right-click on the shape to edit the fill and outline. I've been using a solid black outline and a semi-transparent gray fill. You can find the transparency slider in the other fill options. Then right-click on the shape and select set as default shape. The next shapes you draw will look like this. The other drawing tool that I got a lot of use out of was the curve tool. Just click to add vertices to a smooth curve, then double click to finish the object. These are great for contour lines. Objects are layered in the order that they are drawn. When we go and change the fill to opaque, the second object will partially cover the first object. To color these objects, right click, go to the fill menu, and make your choice. I've been getting good use out of the eyedropper tool. Select it, and then go and click on a color that you like. To make a gradient of colors, you need to get the format shape menu to pop up on the right. Right click on the object and select format shape. Then in the format tab, click on gradient fill, and there you can change the color and position of these sliders. You can also change the shape and orientation of the gradient. You can set a color gradient for multiple objects at once if they are all selected. Note that you get a different look if the objects are grouped versus ungrouped. If you know of any other good tips for doing this kind of work in PowerPoint, please drop them in the comments so everyone can learn something. Okay, let's get on to that highlight reel. For the fun of it, I put in some backdrops to make the colors pop a bit more, and to put the figure in context. 
Going back to using this as a tool for planning paint schemes, a background color that makes the character look good might also be a good color to put on the base of the model. All of these minis are projects that are somewhere on the horizon for me. I think each of these sculpts are great, and I'm hoping that I'll get a chance to translate these colors onto models sometime this year. Emperor willing, of course. Okay, so we have reached the point in the video where I normally ask folks to subscribe, and you should, but today I'm going to ask more. Today I am going to challenge you to try this at home. Take a mini, take a favorite mini, a mini that you've been thinking about for a while, a mini that you've been meaning to paint, and take a picture, trace it up, color it in, and see what you come up with. No excuses, uh, this takes less time than painting a mini, and you end up with a ton of benefits. You get to explore the sculpt in a whole new way, you'll notice details that you wouldn't have seen before. You end up with a file that's going to be really useful in planning the color scheme, and finally, you end up with a piece of art. What you end up with is like your own homage to this character, and in my experience, they look really cool, and they are great for sharing on social media. So I would love to see what folks are working on. Please share these around, post in your favorite groups, uh, make sure that I can see them, tag them as Goobertown Challenge, or post a link below in the comments if you don't mind, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, that about does it for this time. I'm probably going to use this technique to figure out what next video is all about, and uh, thanks for watching.